Hello everyone. Well, let's talk about the general purpose APIs available for the Cisco ESA. So let me just quickly show you the output of the program that I was working on with the general purpose APIs. Okay, so the port on which I'm trying to connect, the username and the password, date and time, manage device information, health of the device and the list of accessible APIs four of these in total you can run these things over and over again I mean depends uh, depending on the program that you've written so um, right here for example okay messages in the PVO quarantine 18 right now so if I go ahead and um, you know quarantine a couple of uh, a couple of more messages uh, let me send send across uh, one or two odd messages. Okay, I'll send two emails. And let's see, uh, because I've configured the ESA to basically go ahead and quarantine the emails in the PVO quarantine. So uh, uh, let's see. So this is for the health of the device, number three, and there you go. It changed from uh, 18 to 20, right here. 18, it changed to 20, and you have all these uh, four options available inside uh, the general purpose APIs. What are these uh, general purpose APIs and where did I get these from? Let's jump into the website. Okay, so I've shared the, uh, the URL of this website in my previous video as well. I'll put it down in the description anyways. So these are general purpose APIs right here. For the Cisco ESA, this is 14.0. Uh, the guide is 14.0. So we got four of these. Querying the system time, managed email gateway information, APIs accessible and the health APIs, which we just saw in that program. Now, querying the system time, it gives you the URL right here. This is what you are concerned with when you're writing the program. And the second thing would be this, and this is what you are concerned with. And then we have uh, the last two as well. So the health and uh, the other one. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at the program. Uh, that I wrote and why did I specifically choose CMD to run it in? Okay, so let's take a look at the program. We got uh, five modules in here that I've imported. Two of these were not used in the last video, if I'm, if I'm correct. Uh, I didn't use this one as well. So um, these are the two new ones that I've used in this uh, program. Uh, manifest, no need to, uh, to look into that at the moment. I mean, we're not concerned with that at the moment. So uh, these are the functions, around 10 to 11 functions that I've used. I've done almost everything inside the functions. And let me just make it a little simple for you. For those who, who, who would be interested to, know, interested to know more about this program, let me just help you out a little. So this is a Dunder method right here. You can search online for what it means and why do we use it. The first thing is fetching the IP address and the port number or that way calling this uh, function and then using that IP address and port number in setting the base URL. So let's check this out. So fetching the IP address right here. So first thing is IP address input and then we're asking the user to input the IP address. And then the port number, we're asking the user to input the port number again. And then we're returning the IP address and the port number. Then we're using this IP address and port number in setting up the base URL. Okay, URL, HTTP, and then using that IP address and the port number, which the user uh, mentioned, then uh, setting up the URL with that information. Okay, so, uh, and then we're going with the username and password. We're fetching it from the user again. We're making sure that the user gives us this information and we're defining another function for that. So user equals to input username. So here the user uh, gives them the username and then the password, uh, get pass dot get pass. So this is uh, basically the reason that I was using CMD because you see if I do it right now, okay, using this particular, um, using just idle, if I just run it here as an example, if I do it, okay, I just executed the code and uh, this is what I get. Okay, enter the IP address 10.106.36.232.0. That's the IP address, port number 6080. Okay, API. Now once I hit enter, you'll see it's not an error like like 
it did not crash the program, okay? It's, it is still asking me for the password, but look at this. What is it telling us? It's a warning which says, cannot control echo on the terminal. So it's not able to do that on the terminal. The reason is idle does not support this. Um, well, if you want to look into the specifics, um, please go to, I would say, Stack Overflow. You'll find a good bit of information on this. Um, you can use uh, any other terminal, any terminal basically, which supports the, I don't know, the TTY or something related to it. So that's why the password input may be echoed. Now, if I type the password, let's say this, okay, you can see it. But when I ran the same in the CMD, I did not see this problem. So when I ran this program in the CMD, I was. I did not see the password echo on the screen. 6080, username, API. Now, if I type anything, nothing. We don't see anything in here. And uh, let's see. Um, there you go. You don't see anything, and I'm able to log in. But if I do it from idle, we have a problem right there. Okay, so this is the reason I use CMD. Okay, so get past. It also works with uh, getting the username, but I just take it uh, as, you know, simply using the input method there. Okay, now once I fetch the username and password, uh, I, I store them in the username and the password variables. Credentials, then I'm trying to convert the username and password. I've converted these two fields using this function right here. As I mentioned in my last video, that these need to be um, base64 encoded and that's when you see that uh, in the headers authorization basic plus credentials credentials are basically is basically this particular variable uh, variable that I'm passing to headers uh, fetch headers now here I'm trying to convert the username and password to base64 then I'm passing that uh, onto the headers function and then comes in the while loop. While true, fetch uh, choice, choice if the user enters one, uh, two, three, four, and so on. And then if the user enters Q, it's gonna quit, okay? Okay, as we see right here, if I go ahead and run date and time right here, I wanna quit, I can use capital, um, uppercase Q or a lowercase Q is going to work in both the ways. Okay, because I'm actually using a function here to take care of that problem. So that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that the user, the output looks good. And uh, these are the functions. I'll put it, I'll put the code down in the description below if, if it gives me that option. If it does not, then I'll try to put it somewhere else, possibly on GitHub or anywhere. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, this is pretty much it. And this covers everything with the general purpose APIs with the uh, Cisco ESA. The next, in the next one, I'm possibly going to go for the other APIs. And so far, we have just used GET. If you noticed in the last video as well, we use just GET right here. GET, 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 and again GET. Uh, we'll try possibly post another other uh, things in the next video and try some more fun stuff. And see how we're able to, um, you know, get different results for different things that we try on it. Well, thank you so much again for watching the video, and have a wonderful day ahead. Goodbye.